I got to rank number one on ladder. I'm going to be going over some of the replays that I saved, and then I'm going to be talking about the format in general and what other people think of it. Now, I want to start by going over this replay, and this one's against Chen Pao, Dragonite, Rillaboom, uh, Urshifu, uh, Ogre Pun, Heartflame, and Fluttermane. Now, I end up leading Tornadus plus Fluttermane into this. I thought it was pretty consistent. You know, Tornadus pretty easily lives the hit. And here, all I have to do is go for, like, two attacks. So I go for Dazzling Gleam, Bleak Windstorm. Unfortunately, don't get it off, which is which is okay. It happens. But here, I just go into Gold and go and Protect. I thought it was pretty consistent because they're forced to go for Sucker Punch. And now my positioning's not that bad. So they go for Extreme Speed, covering for Trastalization. I just go for Nasty Plot and Dazzling Gleam. I thought they would try to knock out Golden Go, and I wanted to keep Dragonite on the field, basically. So Because Dragonite's not really doing anything. So now they go into Rillaboom, which makes sense, as I just protect the Golden Go because I didn't want to take Ivy Cudgel. They call that really well and end up going uh, for, you know, their move. Now I go for Terra Dragon because it pretty much covers all my options, and now I'm in a relatively good position. They do Ivy Cudgel, and I just Nasty Plot again, actually. I thought this was pretty optimal, just because, um, like, the thing is, is that I need to get rid of the Ogre Pond, basically. Like, that's the biggest threat, so I, I was I thought this was, like, pretty optimal. And I just make it rain here, because uh, plus three make it rain does knock out Rillaboom, which is, like, pretty fair. So yeah, and that's what I do here, and now I'm, now, I'm in an, uh, now I'm in a pretty good spot. So I just have to Tailwind here, just in case the Dragonite is really fast. They go for a Grassy Glide, and now they should just lose both Pokemon. Yeah, because make and range is so powerful. And this is why I set up the second nasty plot. Like, I really, really had to here. Like, even though we got flinched by Ice Skull Crash, the win was actually pretty convincing. Like, Terra Normal E Speed, like, it does a lot, but it doesn't knock out. And then we just win, like, pretty comfortably. So, yeah, it was, it was, it was good. I think, like, getting flinched is a bit unfortunate because, yeah, we would have just won immediately if we went for Bleak Wind, uh, Dazzling Gleam, but that's kind of just how it works sometimes. I do think that's the most optimal play. That turn one, though. Like, if you don't get flinched or crit, then you just actually immediately win the game. Because then at that point, they can't really do anything. I also love double ghost. I, like, you do overlap on weaknesses a little bit, but, like, the the double immunity to extreme speed's just so, so useful. And I think Helmet, uh, Torn also put in a ton of work. Because Tornadus can run a lot of different items. Tornadus can run, like, Rocky Helmet, it can run Covert Cloak... Like, it can run Citrus Berry, but I really do like Helmet, because, like, the extra chip you get really adds up. Like, it's, it's like, 1-6. Like, it is so, so good. But, yeah. The next one is going to be up against, uh, so Urshifu, Ogre Pond, uh, uh, Fluttermane, Iron Hands, Cresselia, and Regular Ursaluna. Now, my thoughts on Regular Ursaluna. I think it's very, very good right now. And it's going to get a good result at the European Regional. There's a very good player playing it, and, uh, yeah, he made his alts public, but I think he had three alts in, like, top five on Showdown with the regular Ursaluna. He also, like, got really, he also did really well at, he, like, top cut worlds with Ursaluna, too, and, yeah, I actually expect him to get a good result. This isn't him, he has, like, a different team that he's been laddering with, but, yeah, I'm actually, like, really, I'm actually really looking forward to see how he does, and maybe, like, some other people who brought regular Ursaluna, because I think it's actually extremely slept on right now in the format. Like, it does beat a lot of teams. But how do we manage it? So this was, uh, I believe, yeah, so this one, they lead really well. So they lead Urshifu plus Cresselia. So the reason they lead Urshifu plus Cresselia, so Golden Go doesn't get going, and I just go for Bleak Windstorm immediately. And then I do go for Shadow Ball, just because I really wanted to pressure the Cresselia, and I wanted to, like, weaken it. They actually go for Lunar Blessing and not Trick Room, which is super smart on their end. So now they knock out the Golden Go, which is a bit unfortunate, and I just go for Bleak Windstorm. They also had Mental Herb, by the way, which is why I did not taunt. But I wasn't too worried, like, I was relatively confident on my positioning anyways. So now I just fake out the Cresselia and Bleak Windstorm. That covers all the options, because, like, Ursh Urshifu seems to be very, very fast. But yeah, now it now they go into Ursaluna. This isn't the worst here, so what I do is I just wood hammer. I, I had a feeling they would sword stance. I didn't wanna I didn't wanna risk anything, so yeah, I just go for that. And unfortunately, we miss Bleak Windstorm, so we lose Rillaboom. If we hit, we just won the game immediately, but that's kind of just how it works. So now I go into Landorus. Uh, Landorus is extremely powerful. I think Banded Landorus is extremely underrated right now. Like, there's a lot of things that it just beats. Also, do you guys see... So you guys saw the Bleak Wind animation? <laughs> it actually... So if they go for Spiky Shield and you click Bleak Wind, I don't know if this is exactly how it works. I might be completely wrong on this, but I actually think the Bleak Wind Storm missed the Spiky Shield. It just... It just I, I think that's what happened. Let me know in the comments below if that's how, like, Showdown does it. Like, did they code it in a way where if you uh, click the move and it misses, it's still going to show as miss? 
without factoring in the fact that they clicked a protecting move? Or does it only work with spiky shield? You know, that's actually pretty interesting to look into. Because, like, I always pay attention to those kind of things. Like, if you're on best of three ladder and uh, you lose your internet and then you connect back, you actually have to go back to that, like, the, um, the page where it shows all, like, the whole progress of the best of three to be able to move on into the next game. That's, like, another small intricacy that I saw. I just want to mention that. I thought that was kind of cool. But, yeah, like, other, other either way, uh, I just go for Bleak Windstorm here. Does a ton of damage. And... Yeah, they go for Wicked Blow, does not knock out because Tornadus is the GOAT, and then yeah, just Rock Slide. So yeah, this was a pretty, this was a bit pretty fine. Like, the thing is, is that, um, so basically, um, yeah, like, I think Landers is incredible right now. Uh, if you guys saw the open team sheet, I did post it on my community tab a bit earlier, but, um, yeah, I'm actually running Choice Banded Landers. So everyone's using Choice Band Hisu and Arcanine, so why am I using Landers instead? The thing about Hisu and Arcanine is that I think it's really good with Chen Pao. Like, E-Speeds, Flare Blitzes, and everything, it's incredible at Chen Pao. It also has a good matchup into Chen Pao, Dragonite, Rillaboom, course, and uh, Ogre Pond, Heart Flame. Like, Hisu and Arcanine is incredible into those four. But I felt like I had enough of a matchup into those four. Like, we beat it with the Terra Dragon, Golden Go. We used Fluttermane really well into it. So because I felt confident with that matchup, I went with Landers. Now, where does Banded Landers shine? It's really, really good into some of the balance teams. Like, you just spam Bleak Windstorm and, or, like, Banded Earthquake. And it's really good into, like, Amoongus. You can taunt the Amoongus. You know, you can Bleak Windstorm their landers. Like, even if you're minus two, you're still doing a ton of damage to their Iron Hands. You have Speed Control. Like, you're really, really just cleaning through a lot of the really powerful balance teams going around. And I think Landers does the job way, way better than, um... Like, I'll, I'll talk about it a bit more once I go over the open sheet, but, um, yeah, I think Landers does the job way better than Hisu and Arcanine, especially for this team. Like, Earthquake's just broken. And now we're taking on Balance. So, uh, this one is, uh, the standard Roaring Moon Balance. It's one of the most common teams right now. You pretty much have to have a matchup against this. If you don't, it, like, you won't be in a good position. So, yeah, here I lead Landers plus, uh, Tornadus. They lead really well, actually. I think Lando Moon's a great lead. So, here my play is actually really straightforward. Uh, they go for Rock Tomb, which they seem to have Rock Tomb over Rock Slide. Look at that. Hold up. Okay, okay. Banded U-Turn did 59% to Roaring Moon. That's a naturally bulky Pokemon after Intimidate. Like, that's how good Banded Landers. Like, its attack is almost 150. It's 145. So if you're clicking Choice Band boosted attacks, like, they are so strong. Like, Hisu and Arcanine, I believe, is at, like, 120 at most. I think it might be even lower, like, 115. Like, Landers is, like, it's in another tier, basically. Like, that's why I think Bandit Landers is so, I think it's so, so underexplored. I think it's not underexplored. Like, it was good at Worlds, but I think it's really good. So, yeah, I just go for Bleak Windstorm as well. Do a ton of damage to their team. And here I just Aqua Jet. And then I go for Bleak Windstorm. Yeah, I Aqua Jet because I didn't want that slot to swap into Amoongus and for me to take a million damage. So, here I was, this was actually an earlier version of the team. I was using Mystic Water Urshifu on this team before, so my play was really safe. I would have just Surging Strikes. I don't think it was too bad if, if Amoongus came in, because it also would have taken Bleak Windstorm and just dropped because they're Helmet. Yeah, that's the thing about Helmet. Like, they drop to Bleak Windstorm plus Terra Water Surging, and if they're not Helmet and they're Citrus, then you don't take Chip, so it's actually a win win. But yeah, here I had Mystic just because, you know, it was like an earlier version of the team. I think Scarf is just so much better, and I did change to it eventually as I got to number one, but. Yeah, the reason for Scarf, by the way, is that I just want to outspeed Fluttermane and all that, because outspeeding Fluttermane is so important, because, like, Fluttermane is really, really good into Golden Go. Like, Shadow Ball Moonblast is just almost an auto win there. And yeah, you guys saw that it was, like, one of the lower ratings, like, compared to these two, so, yeah, this was actually the battle that, um, like, basically, this was the battle that, what is it called? It was, like, it, it was before, like, I changed the Scarf. But it's just really, really good. Yeah, I didn't save too many replays. These are kind of just ones that, like, I was sending to friends. Because I didn't really expect to hit rank 1. I was kind of just, like, testing stuff. So, yeah, they're kind of just in random order. I kind of just pull, like, I kind of just looked through all, like, my DMs and, like, from my friends. And, uh, yeah, I kind of just pulled, I just kind of just pulled out the ones that I ended up sending to them. So, yeah, that's kind of why. I did, I did, I did look for the one that got me to rank 1 I left that for the end. But otherwise, it's, like, decently disorganized. But yeah, I just thought that, like, this one, this one was so incredible. Like, Landers, if they did not lead correctly, like, if they did not, if they did not lead their own Landers, like, I said free Earthquakes and Bleak Winds. Like, it would have been, it would have been really good. Like, if they led, like, Iron Hands or Heatran. The other thing is that Iron Hands, Heatran really hate going up, like, really love going up against Golden Go. But they hate Landers. 
Hisu and Arcanine, they also like going up against, so that's kind of like the other reason there. But yeah, I just thought like this this was like really good though. Like it was so convincing. Like I think the matchup's actually really, really free. And like I then the reason the matchup is free, like other other reason I know is because I have a friend who's using this team to really high success, and like he's actually the one that built the team, so like he knows the weaknesses in and out. And he was telling me, like, yo, no one better bring a banded landers to the next regional, because that's the that that was really annoying for him when he was playing against it. So yeah. After hearing his thoughts, I was like pretty convinced that it is um like banded landers was good into tailwind. So yeah, that did actually kind of help. Like if you have a friend who's like built that original team that's so common, like you have so much more insight, which actually helps you build around it a lot more effectively. But yeah, here uh, I just lead uh, Tornadus plus Golden Go. I thought this was decently consistent. So this was actually an even earlier version of the team. So yeah, I had multiple versions of the team that I tested. Uh, so this one was actually Specs Golden Go. So the reason I was running Specs Golden Go a bit earlier, because I was like, Specs Golden Go is really good into the Tailwind Mirror. But then eventually I went to the Nasty Plot stuff because Nasty Plot is a bit better into balance in case they manage your landers properly or figure out how to play around band. It was also a bit better into the Cresselia stuff, unless they have Dark Ursh. Like, if they don't have Dark Ursh, the whole Cresselia team kind of just loses to uh, Rillaboom plus, like, well-played Golden Go. So, yeah, that's kind of the reason I changed the plot. I also felt like the team had enough, like, choice Pokemon. Like, I didn't want to have Banded Landers and Specs Golden Go. It felt a bit restricting. But, yeah, this was the earlier version of... Like, this was an even earlier version, basically. And, yeah, like, it was... um. You know, super bulky specs Golden Go, and yeah, I kind of want to show the progress of how I actually made, like, you know, edited the team, because it's not something you just throw into the builder and, like, immediately have figured out. Like, it does take a while to kind of, like, optimize everything. So yeah, specs make it rain just does a ton of damage. Most Tornadoes just drop to that. They, they seem to be actually an EV to live that. So yeah, here, the positioning is just amazing for us. So I protect Urshifu, because, you know, back then I was actually running Mystic. I did change to Scarf a bit later into it. And yeah, like now, now it's just really good. The other thing I had before, by the way, so I'm running Taunt now, but before I was actually running Scary Face. So like those actually seem to play a role in this. Yeah, so they go for like Rock Slide and all that, and now now we just like, kind of win the game because we go for close combat. But yeah, it's like the team the team went through progress basically. Like it's uh, I think the I think team building is really interesting in the sense where like. You're not, like, you are, like, you know which Pokemon are good and everything, but finding out the right sets is definitely a challenge because, like, the thing is, is that you could just immediately lose, or, like, uh, not lose, but, like, you could, you won't, basically, you need to optimize and, like, really figure out the right sets. Like, do you go Specs? Do you go Nasty Plot? Do you go, like, Clear Amulet Landers? Like, those are things that, like, take a lot of testing to figure out, and those are the differences between you, like, being a good player and being able to beat good players. Because if you're, like, I think above, like, I'd, I'd say, like, 1680 on ladder, like, for, like, the best, this, like, the best of three ladder, um, yeah, it's, like, it's the uh, best of three ladder. Like, if you're above, like, 1680 on that, then, um, like, you probably are gonna have to beat multiple good players to hit rank one. I think at least, like, six or seven in a row, and if you lose one, you're gonna be set back, like, 30 points. So, yeah, like, you really do have to have your things, like, really optimized out. So, here's another replay. Uh, Tornadus plus Golden Go, again. Pretty straightforward, and I think this one was also when I had specs. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, so this one was also when I had specs. I just want to showcase the specs one because I think specs Golden Go is also really good on the right team. And again, the bulk is was just crazy when I was running specs. Yeah, so specs Golden Go, you know, make it ring just immediately gets rid of that. And then, yeah, here it's really good for us. So they go for a graph. So I actually do not go for a tailwind here. The reason is one, like Aqua Jet, and two, like, I didn't want them to Trick Room, of course, but they just go for Gleam. Like, once they do that, the game is over, because now I can Tailwind and knock out their uh, Furograph, so yeah. And we were still, like, decently high up on Ladder, so, like, yeah, I was, like, really, really trying to, like, test all of this stuff out. Like, I think, like, test testing, testing's really interesting part of it, yeah. But, like, I think Specs Golden Go put in a lot of work. I feel like it was mostly just the Ladder thing, though. Like, if you catch your opponents off guard on ladder, it works, but I think if you're playing in, like, best of three, you really do have to be, like, meticulous about it. Like, we did see a lot of Specs Golden Go do well, like, uh, Joseph Ugarte got top eight at, uh, LAIC with Specs Golden Go, and, uh, another player, I think they go by David Niss online, uh, he also got top four, so, yeah, some teams do really like Specs Golden Go, I think mine just, uh, like, Specs Golden Go is really good, like, we saw it in those replays, but I think there was definitely, like, slightly better options. Now, I wonder if I was using Specs... I wonder what my strategy into this was. Tornadus Golden Go. I think it's also Specs. Yeah, this was another Specs Golden Go one. That's crazy. Uh, does Dragonite drop to that, actually? I actually particularly don't remember. Yeah, it just drops. Okay. So I think I just win this one immediately. 
They do go Furograph. Now, oh, okay, okay. So Bleak Windstorm. <laughs> 34%. Make it rain. Minus one, Terra Steel. Yeah, that, that was just, uh, that was really, really funny. So that just immediately knocks out. And then I Rain Dance. Uh, I live Sucker Punch, so it's like... Even, even if I didn't tear, I would have lived Sucker Punch, which was really nice. And then, yeah, Make It Rain does nothing to Heatran, but at this point, like, Urshifu just wins. Yeah, like, Bleak Wind into Surging Strikes, I think it's just an automatic pin. Like, that is so, so strong. But yeah, so these were some of the, uh, like, Specs Golunga replays. Uh, some of the earlier ones were some of the Nasty Plot ones. So that's kind of, like, the progression of how the team, you know, developed. Like, it was, it was definitely a lot of testing. And this is the battle that got me to rank number one. So I needed one more battle to hit rank number one, and um, the thing was, was that, so I had no matchup into this for some reason. Oh wait, it is this player. Hold up. Because one of, so basically I sent, I sent like the OTS of this, uh, like of this guy's team to my uh, friends, and I was like, yo, I have no matchup into this. Like it seems so, so brutal. So the reason it's brutal is that I'm running Scarf Roshifu. But this Chen Pao, and like that's supposed to be a way to beat Chen Pao, and so is Terra Water Landers, but they're Terra Blast Grass Life Orb. So I can't use it to beat them. Also, I need the Landers versus a Suyin Arcanine, and I need the Terra Water sometimes versus Urshifu. And I need Landers versus the Amoongus modes. But they have King Gambit. Now, I would use Terra Fairy Flutter into King Gambit if they're Swords Dance stuff. But they're Assault Vest, so I can't. So it's really, really, really bad. Also, no, so I, I sent, yeah, so I sent the OTS of this uh, person's uh, team to my friends, and then, uh, like, the next day my friend, like, plays them again on ladder, and they're like, oh, is this the one that, like, had a really good matchup into you? I didn't remember the username, so I just said no, but yeah, it actually was them. So, if you're watching this, oops. Yeah, yeah, it, it was, it was them, it was them. Yeah, but, like, this matchup was, like, really bad. So I think, I, I don't, ex I actually do remember how this set went. So, um, yeah, I've been really busy with school and everything, because, like, I've, I'm ha I have exams and stuff coming up, so I do have to, like, focus on that but um i do actually remember how this replay went so basically um uh, game one i get completely destroyed game two they uh they i don't i think i think they choked a little bit or like over predicted and then this is game three and game three is really really good like i think it was super close yeah this matchup I, like no one's really running this kind of team i don't think they're running this kind of team anymore either on ladder at least based on what i've played them recently so yeah, but, like, the matchup was just atrocious. But, like, if you want to hit rank 1, like, you have to beat those atrocious matchups. It's kind of just the way it goes. So, yeah, you have to, uh, you have to earn it, of course. Like, I think, I think this, I think key to success in Pokemon is definitely, like, being able to, like, capitalize on your good matchups and lose as least bad matchups as possible. Like, you really do have to outplay. So, yeah, here I just leave Fluttermane Tornadus. I thought it was relatively safe, as I just go for Tailwind and Dazzling Gleam. I went to, I just wanted to get some chip off, and they just rock slide. Tons of damage to everything. So, that's fine. So, now they go into King Gambit. As I just protect and go for Bleak Winst I go for Rain Dance. Oh, that's actually really smart. That's for my Urshifu, I assume. Yeah, that's definitely for the Urshifu. So, now I go into Urshifu, because I want to get, I want to pin a slot. They go for Sucker Punch. I actually read this completely. So, you might be like, what did Fluttermane do? It didn't protect. A substitute. So I run sub on Fluttermane. I don't run Moonblast. So the main reasons of is for the uh, like in DD Armors matchup. Like that plus Rillaboom is like really good into it. But also it's just outplay and bad matchups. Like having that outplay option, I think I'm real. I really really like. So yeah, there's that. Now this Chen Pao's Terra Blast Grass. So they Sucker Punch Life Orb. By the way, I wanted to read that so bad. I actually like I was I was sitting there. I was like I should probably read that. They're gonna double Sucker Punch. But I was like, if I get it wrong, it's so bad for me. But if I get it right, I can still win. So I was like, I, and if, yeah, so I, I was like, if I get it wrong, like, if, if they don't double Sucker Punch, I just lose the game immediately. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, like, play it. I'm just gonna play it normally, and if they double Sucker Punch, it's okay. So now I'm down to my last two Pokemon. I still have Substitute up. So now I predict the Protect on Chen Pao. I was like, I probably have to at this point. And I just go for Dazzling Gleam. Solid damage to King Gambit. Now... How do I win this game? That's the question. There, there's one way. And if they double Sucker Punch the Fluttermane, I just lose immediately. So I have to make that kind of read. Because if I Woodhammer Gambit, Gambit goes down. But if they attack the Rillaboom with Chen Pao, like with their Ice move, then I also lose. So it's basically a mind game. Yeah, that's also why like I went for the Surging Strikes, because like, at least I can just force the mind games later. So I go for Glide. I predict this, by the way. They Ice Spinner. Now, Glide into Gleam is just enough to beat Gambit. 
Like, I was pretty confident in it, because, like, the Gleams were doing, like, 27, so I was, like, sort of ruined Boosted Glide. And now, because it's single target Gleam and Flutter Mane's faster than Torn, I just went. So I hit rank 1. That's how that's how I hit rank 1. Also, if you guys are seeing, like, plus 7. Like, that's nothing. If I lose one game at, like, 1737, like, if I lost this, I would have gone down 30 points. Have to win, like, four more to get back to that same spot a lot of the time. So, like, you really do have to earn it. Like, that, I think that's, like, the part of it. But, um, yeah, that's also why you have to win your bad matchups. Like, it's just it's just the way it goes. And it was hard. But, yeah, this was uh, this was the replay that got me to rank 1. I think, like, I don't know. This, this, <laughs> some of the reads were really hard. I should have read the double sucker punch, honestly. Like, if I read the double sucker punch, I think I, like, would have been such a good position. Yeah, there's really no reason to actually just throw away the, uh... Because I had free close combat into King Gambit as well. Yeah, I think I was probably just, uh, like, I, I was doing schoolwork at the same time, so I, I, think I, I think I was just, like, clicking really quickly, but, yeah, it, it worked, it worked, it worked out pretty well. I think, like, yeah, the kind of the way, yeah, a lot of the time when I ladder, it's like, I'm taking notes in class, and then I'm opening showdown, like, every, like, I'd say, like, 35, 40 seconds, and I'm just writing, like, I'm writing, like, a, I'm, like, clicking a button or two, and then going back. That's, that's kind of the, that's kind of the way I practice sometimes, but, you know, some, sometimes, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. But, yeah, let's see. So, the open team sheet. So, I have been uh, working on this for a little bit. I might bring it to some mid-season showdowns. We'll see. But, um, yeah. So, basically, um, Tornadus. Uh, I went with the standard Rocky Helmet set. I did debate between a lot of moves. I debated between Protect. I debated between uh, Scary Face. I also tried something else. I tried Endure it. So, the reason for Endure is that if you have Rocky Helmet, you're at low health and the Urshifu Surging Strikes. They're taking all the Helmet Trip. Which I thought would be really funny, because I've seen armors use Endure, and I've seen armors use Endure really well. I was like, what if you can use it on Tornadus to get up second Tailwind? Like, I personally don't like Protect. I, I mean, I like Protect, but it's it's not it's not that that good. Like, I think it's okay. Like, if, if it depends, it's, I think it's a good flex move. So I was like, okay, what do I run? So Endure is really nice, but then I went back to Taunt. The reason was, was that if you want to be good balance players, you need Taunt. If you want to be, like, yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like, I don't feel like I can consistently be good balance players with Tornadus Landers without Taunt. Like, even with the Nasty Plot Golden Go and Rillaboom support with Fake Out, I still don't think it's that easy. So I want to Taunt. It's also good into Cresselia that don't run Mental Herb. It forces them to basically run Mental Herb. And if they're running a better item like Citrus Berry, then you punish that really, really hard. So I like that as well. It also allowed me to lead Tornadus a lot more. I like Taunt into other Tornadus if they choose not to Tailwind immediately. Like, there's just so many good uses for Taunt. You prevent something from clicking Protect, so if you don't bring Urshifu, it's really useful. I personally really like it. I also consider dropping Rain Dance for something like Icy Wind, but or like any of those moves. But I liked Rain Dance because it powers up your Urshifu. Like, Surging Strikes, like, Tailwind Urshifu is the most broken thing, like, ever to be created. Like, I think, like, in... At least in Scarlet and Violet. Like, of course it's a Sword and Shield thing, but I think just in terms of, like, Scarlet and Violet metagame, like, Tornadus plus Urshifu is the most broken thing ever. So I wanted Rain Dance to make it stronger. Also, Golden Go is a Steel type, and Rillaboom's a uh, Grass type. I wanted to eliminate the Fire Weakness a little bit and use uh, Rain Dance as a defensive me mechanism. Because a Rillaboom is Terra Grass here instead of defensive Terra Fire like I ran at Sacramento, so I did want to have Rain Dance there. So yeah, Tornadus, uh, otherwise it's really straightforward. Uh, Terra Steel, though, uh, t I think Terra Steel is better than Terra Ghost because, like, so there's so many situations where I just Terra Steel and I spam Bleak Wind, like, five or six times. And it is really easy to spam Bleak Winds over and over and over. Like, so I think Steel is better defensive type just in general than Ghost. You don't get the Fake Out immunity, of course, so, like, you don't have the consistent Tailwind sometimes. But I think the benefits are just so much more. Like, you sit in front of Fluttermane, you sit in front of other Bleak Wind Storm, which, like, Bleak Wind Storm's a strong move. It's coming off of, like, a 125 special attack, even though it's uninvested. Like, it is it is really good, so. Yeah, I personally love Terra Steel. I've used it, I've used it really effectively. I used it at uh, Sacramento as well, so I was, like, really comfortable with Then Banded Landers. So why, so first of all, why these moves? So the first question I got, so I, you know, I have rank one, I send like the team to one of my friends, and the first question, uh, my friend, my friend Nora asked, it's like, do you like the synergy between Earthquake, like, um, like the real synergy between Earthquake and Rillaboom isn't very good. So how do you kind of get around that? And the simple answer to that is, just play better. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, like Earthquake next to Tornadus is so broken, and that's the reason why your matchup into balance is so good. So like, if you do bring Landers and you uh and you end up bringing your Rillaboom as well, and you try to play a cycle game, 
you just have a three move landers which isn't that bad like it's fine like stomping tantrum rock slide u-turn already hits the stuff really hard so yeah you kind of just have to play towards that i think i think that's kind of the one that's like that's like the simple way to put it like earthquake is so broken next to tornadoes and then with with rillaboom you're just not clicking earthquake stomping tantrum still really good that's also why stomping tantrums there i did consider terra blast flying by the way because if you're going up against other Rillaboom, then, and like you're not bringing your own Rillaboom, then Terra Blast Flying is a really good way to knock them out, stall out their grassy turn, and then proceed to late game Earthquake. But I love Terra Water. It was good It was good into other Urshifu. It's really good into other Chen Pao, unless they're that Terra Grass Terra Blast one for some reason. Yeah, it's really, really good there. Um, yeah, and then Stomping Tantrum is, like, it's really good single target. I did want single target. If they fake out Banded Stomping Tantrum at 150 base power, basically knocks everything out so there's like that that as an advantage too and yeah i just like the consistency of it because you can really only earthquake next to tornadoes so i think having uh like stomping tantrums is absolutely required this banded landers was used a bit in regulation d it was actually a decent staple on some of the tailwind teams i think just fall off in popularity because of his Hisu and arcanine but like landers is stats it's 145 attack like it's so it's so much higher than his and arcanine and earthquake is just a better move than rock slide like and you have banded rock slide anyway so you have that it's not as strong as a soon arcanine because of stab but like banded earthquake it's just inherently i think it's inherently more broken than uh like his soon arcanine banded rock slide and also like higher attack that's the other thing and you're an intimidate pokemon with pivot so you have that advantage as well i think it's kind of just going off the fact that and this is crazy to say because it's soon arcanine's one five events but I think Landers Darien in general, like just comparatively, is a higher quality Pokemon than Hisu and Arcanine. Also, the positive matchup into it helps, but I think it's just like the Pokemon quality. Then Fluttermane. I love Fluttermane. I'm on this team. So I like whenever you're building, like I don't really throw on Fluttermane just because it's the most common Pokemon in the format. It's very specific for matchups, especially this kind of set, because it doesn't even have Moonblast. So you lead like Fluttermane Landers or Fluttermane Urshifu into like Ndidi Armorage. You can click your pivot move, like, you know, you turn with either Pokemon, get into your Rillaboom. Then you can uh, click Substitute as they follow me Trick Room. Now you have to lead something that pressures their like Armorage. So like Landers does that with Stomping Tantrum, Urshifu does that with Surging Strikes. That's how you can U-turn the Ndidi, get into the, uh, you know, Rillaboom. And they, you get up Substitute and then they Trick Room follow me. Then you can fake out the armors, get off an attack, you know, cycle around. And because of the substitute, you can really easily stall out the Trick Room. Once the Trick Room's gone, you have really powerful attackers like Banded Landers, you know, Terra Grass Rillaboom potentially, even your own Fluttermane Urshifu, and you kind of just win really easily. But you need the substitute to do that, and that's part of the reason why. But substitute is also just a good outplay move. Like fake out plus substitute's really good into Don Dozo teams. Uh, we saw we saw substitute in that like really like awful matchup that got me to rank one. And yeah, I also like it to stall a turn versus Iron Hands. That was actually really good for me at Sacramento when I used this Fluttermane. So yeah, I think I think this kind of Fluttermane set's just. Re I think it's like it's not that strong. I think it's just specifically for matchups. Because you can substitute in front of Dragon and Chen Pao decently effectively too. Like it's it's basically like I want to have the option to outplay and also it kind of just covers for that one bad matchup. So yeah, I love I love Fluttermane for those matchups. That's pretty much all it's for. Like, you know, Dragon at Chen Pao and uh, Sai Spam and Dozo, but I do want to be able to beat those. Then Terra Grass Rillaboom. I think Terra Grass Rillaboom is incredible. Terra Grass Woodhammer and Terrain does absolutely crazy damage. Like, it is insane. If you set up your rain, then you're not weak to fire anymore, which is your, literally your biggest weakness. So, yeah, I love Terragrass. Terragrass Glide was really strong. I clicked Terragrass Woodhammer a bunch, though. Like, the amount of damage you get is, like, I, I don't even know how to explain. Like, it is just, like, it's it's mind-blowingly like, crazy. Like, it is so, so strong. I absolutely love it. But outside of that, it's a really bulky Pokemon. Like Assault Vest plus Intimidate support, the team has triple pivots, so you can actually utilize the like all the pivots plus fake out really effectively. And the fake out is really good at helping you get up the substitute, also helping you to get up nasty plot on Golden Go. And then yeah, you just have a lot of cycle Pokemon, and that's something that was pretty nice for the team. But yeah, like Terragrass, Woodhammer, and Tailwind is just really impossible to switch into sometimes. Then, uh, Urshifu, I liked Aqua Jet as the fourth move, um, like, sometimes you're under Trick Room and you randomly need to Aqua Jet something, or sometimes you just need to Aqua Jet a low-health Pokemon, like a low-health Chen Pao that you don't want to take, like, extra Sucker Punch chip on, so, yeah, it's really useful, because especially since Urshifu is such a big Terra candidate, like, you really want to have that Aqua Jet. 
Now, I did pick Terra Water over Terra Poison. Terra Poison was the successful one initially, but I think people started gravitating more towards Water in the Choice Scarf one because, like, the extra damage you get from Surging Strike is so valuable. Like, it's just, it just does so, so much damage, especially in rain, that you really want to have it. Like, I think Poison could be cool with Mystic Water, because Mystic Water naturally has a lot of power, but if you're losing out on the 20%, you really want to, like, at least commit to Terra Water to, like, maximize your damage there. I love Scarf Urshifu, though. Um, it was really good into other Fluttermane, good into other Chen Pao, even good into other Tornadas. Sometimes I just soaked up the Rocky Helmet just to get rid of them. Like, there was a lot of, lot of situations where Scarf Urshifu just won games, and I think it's really good into the Tailwind Mirror, and the other thing about Scarf Urshifu is that it beats a lot of the faster Pokemon that want to beat Golden Go. Like, I think that's one of the main reasons for Scarf Urshifu, and yeah, just in Rain, it's incredibly powerful. I think it's just generally a broken Pokemon. Then there's Golden Go. Uh, Terra Dragon seemed to be the best Terra for it. I did try Terra Water because I didn't want to lose to Fluttermane, but I felt like the team had enough ways to beat Fluttermane, especially with the Urshifu change to Choice Scarf. I did change from uh, like Choice Specs Terra Steel to uh, Nasty Plot stuff. I think it's a bit better just because like the thing about the like the thing about the Terra Steel like Specs one, I think it's so linear and like you have to get the lead right. If your opponent's counter lead you or get like some 50-50s right, like you just lose the game immediately. So I felt like uh, having a Nasty Plot was just a bit more consistent. And yeah, if you're able to get Nasty Plots up versus like random teams, like you just win. Like, because the thing is, you have to prepare for common teams, but you also have to prepare for the random anti-meta team that you don't particularly, like, expect to go up against. And usually the anti-meta team, like, they have ways to beat common teams, but they don't really have, uh, they don't really have Pokemon with high base stat totals, and Golden Go and Nasty Plot with all this support just really allow you to eat up those teams. So, yeah, that's actually the other role of Golden Go. Like, you will be playing against random teams, teams that you don't expect, and Golden Go is kind of just, like, the counter to it. Now, in terms of the full paste, I will leave it on Patreon for a while because I do actually I do want to use the team a bit later on. But um, yeah, with uh, that, I do want to uh, I want to showcase the. Uh, let's see. So I have this. So I want to pull up the uh, tweets on uh, Urshifu. So Sanvi tweets this out. Um, international champion and also won a regional in Regulation E with uh with you know Urshifu, Tornadus, Hisu, and Arcanine. He was the first one to win the regional with that really common team, and then uh, Chapa also won after that. But yeah, he basically tweets out maybe a hot take, but comically overpowered. Pokemon move slash concepts from Gen 8 should never see the day of light again. Urshifu would ruin what could have been a beautiful format slash game. Prankster Tailwind is mad cheap when the Tailwind's there, and he won a regional with this by the way, and he's still saying this. So like yeah, it seemed like yeah. So it's sad seeing this when they seem like they started caring and balancing through stuff and. Yeah, like limiting skull distribution and smart original design and gimmicks, for example, like Palafin. So then, uh, you know, there's some like, there's some responses. And then I had this response. So um, there's this really funny tweet back in uh, 2022 from Poke Alex, And this is a Sanvi quote. All right, all right, let's... Uh... Wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay, so I'm actually going to play this whole thing. This is the funniest thing ever, by the way. So this is Sanvi, by the way. Um, yeah, so this was at a 2022 uh, European International Championships. Let me see if I can pull up the volume a little bit. All right, all right, all right. I'm just, I'm just going to play. This is so funny. All did you see Pokemon? It's like, Urshifu, <laughs> Kalimax, Glastia. They're easy to play, right? I mean, one Pokemon just lets you ignore one aspect of the game, which is protecting, because, oh, look at my ability. Your very important move doesn't work anymore. I mean, that makes the game easier, right? Kalimax, so those things have 170 or something base, base attack, and they have spread moves. And they boost their attack when they, when they kill something. This makes the game easier, right? <laughs> Do you know why they're aiming to make the game easier? Because they want to make uh, the UX9 Academy fail. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched this clip like 20 times, by the way. It's so... I, I don't know. I don't know why. It's just really, really funny. But there's two ends There's two ends of the Urshifu argument. So um, Joe tweets this out. Urshifu is a top 5 Pokemon, but it's definitely not broken. And Ur Joe also has a lot of success with Torn Urshifu. He got top 8 at LAIC with Torn Urshifu. So his take is really valid. And he says, like, like it's really good. Either use it or have good answers for it, but it's not unbeatable. Amoongus, Hands, Bulky, Water, Terra, Strong, Special, Attackers with Support. There's a lot of ways to deal with it. I think Joe's generally correct about it. I do think Urshifu Torn is like super, super broken, and I particularly don't want to go up against it, but yeah, some of the responses go crazy. So NJ 
Eleven is one of Joe's best friends. Uh, they, they, they prep together all the time. But yeah, he just says, Rent must be due this month because this take is farming engagement. Gets 100 likes, okay? And that was really funny. And then <laughs> Joe Brown. Uh, Joe Brown and Joe are also really good friends. Uh, yeah, he just tweets that. Just like Urshifu, you can't protect yourself against these replies, brother. <laughs> and then God, God he's like, uh, good bait, brother. And then uh, Sam Semper tweets out the same clip as well. <laughs> the Joe UX9 Academy. <laughs> it's so, so funny. And then, yeah, uh, Steve and Mia are rent due. And then, yeah, it just, it just keeps going on and on. I think generally people disagree with Joe, but I don't, think he's, I don't think he's wrong about it, actually. Like, the thing about Pokemon is that there's always a way to beat stuff. I think the beautiful thing about VGC is that they don't ban anything, so usually end up with really smart and cool counterplay. I think the coolest one was the evolution of actually how to beat Don Dozo, because originally it was so broken and, like, everyone was using it, but eventually just completely fell off, and, like, inherently a Pokemon that gets plus two on every stat should just sweep every team, but, yeah, I think Urshifu Tornadus will eventually, like, be balanced out a little bit more, but, yeah, I do think for, for the time being, it's, like, absolutely, like, yeah, that, those are kind of, like, my thoughts on just what, like, other people thought, but, um, yeah, also, I do have to clip out that, uh, one, that one, that one word that was said just because of, like, YouTube, so I do have to remind myself about that, but, yeah, I'm gonna end the video there, uh, full, full team with EVs will be on Patreon, I will actually put a Patreon, uh, team report, like, actually going over how exactly the spreads work and kind of how to use the team, but, um, yeah, I'm gonna end the video there, uh, hope you have a good day, thanks for watching, and bye-bye.